Hello and welcome to section 2 of our course. This section is all about classification models. And in this video, we're going to start with logistic regression. But before we build the logistic regression concept, we need to introduce linear regression. Specifically, in this video, we are going to introduce linear regression and then build upon that concept to build our intuition about logistic regression. And logistic regression is the one that is used for classification, but we are going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here because in the next section which is on regression we have to cover linear regression so we will cover it right now so that we don't have to cover it again so let's get started the basic concept of linear regression is that we try to estimate numerical target values using features of our data set and we learn a mathematical formula also known as model for our estimation let's take a typical example here we import a bunch of libraries in this notebook and then we load the Boston data set, which is a housing data set, where we try to calculate the median house price of a house in Boston area. And this is part of scikit-learn, just like the cancer data set that we solved in the part one. So let's load this data set. There is a function in scikit-learn called load underscore Boston. So the data set consists of 506 rows and 13 columns, which are our features. And if we just convert our data set into a Pandas data frame and prints its head. Now here are our 13 features. It's not important right now which what features are for our discussion. We will come to that later. The point we're trying to make here is that, that in linear regression, we try to estimate our target, which is the median house price in this case, based on these features. You see the 13 features. So what we're trying to do here is to know how much influence each feature has in accurately predicting the mean house price or median house price. And uh, typically what we do is we try to create a formula like this. So this is W1, F1. So F1, F2, F3, F4 and so on, they are our features. In this case, we have 13 features in our example. B is called the bias term and it's just a constant. And it's your typical y-intercept in your standard linear equation where you have only one variable x and you are trying to predict y in terms of only one variable or one feature. So we all have seen that form of equations like y is equal to mx plus c, which is where c is the y-intercept and m is the slope. In our case, there are multiple slopes or weights associated with each feature like f1, f2, f3 and so on. So Let's say we assign some arbitrary weights to each feature in each row, that is each training example. So for example, we assign a weight of 10 to feature 1, 15 to feature 2, 100 to feature 3 and so on. Now these are totally random weights and they don't mean much as we really don't know the actual influence of or actual weight of each feature as of now. Now you may be thinking that how would just multiplying some random numbers with each feature and adding them up going to predict the target accurately and you would be right if you are thinking that it won't by itself what we can do is we can put the feature values of that row in our formula with random weights sum them up and then take the difference with the actual target's value in each row and this would be a measure of how much we are off by the target value in that row and if we sum up that difference for each row that would give us the total error we made with our weights for the whole data set obviously we would be way off in all probability since we started with total random weights. To calculate the differences, we are going to use some distance formula similar to the one we use for KNN. And this formula is our loss function. For example, a typical loss function looks like this. It's a mean squared error loss function. And what we are doing here is we are calculating the difference between the actual target value and our predicted target value according with whatever weights we have at that point and uh, taking the square and then summing up the difference for all the rows and then dividing by the number of rows. So this is called the mean squared error. This is one form of the loss formula. Now the trick in linear regression is to start adjusting the weight a little. Once we start with random, we then adjust the weights a little. Maybe we increase the weight for each feature in each row and then see the effect of that change or that increase on the actual loss using the loss function. So basically we will see if the difference went higher or lower, adjust the weights again and then repeat. And that brings us to the concept of derivatives. 
adjusting the weights then calculating the loss to see what effect the adjustment had we are basically calculating the rate at which the loss changes in each row with respect to our changing of weights for that row this is the concept of derivative we are differentiating loss with respect to weights so for example after checking the difference with the target if we are more off than before we adjust the weights again but this time in the opposite direction so if we added something to the weights previously we will probably subtract from the weights this time we keep adjusting the weights till we find a set of weights that gives us the minimum total loss with the target values in other words the loss function that we have seen this one we are trying to minimize its value by adjusting the weights and over a long period of time so we just keep on incrementing or decrementing the weights and then of each feature calculating this loss function and seeing what happens to this whether it is increasing the loss is increasing then decreasing also and so on and the point where we minimize this function that's our point those are our final weights that our model has learned now one thing you might have noticed that uh, we have multiple variables or multiple features so what we need to do is we need to calculate the effect of each feature independently of others in other words we are going to adjust the weight of that one feature while keeping the weight of all other features constant and then observing the change on the loss and then we do it for the other features one by one and this is called taking the partial derivative and that also brings us to the concept of gradients a set of partial derivatives of loss function with respect to each weight is called the set of gradients and we calculate each weight using the formula a weight of that feature minus alpha times the partial derivative of loss function with respect to the uh, weight wi which is the ith features weight where alpha is our learning rate so this is the basic formula that we apply again and again while adjusting the weights and since these are called gradients these partial derivatives therefore this algorithm is called the gradient descent algorithm what we are trying to achieve here is in terms of different features for example in this example this is a 3d graph and we have two features x and y and we are trying to estimate our target z which is the loss function so loss function we are trying to minimize which is z represented by z here and x and y are our features and we are trying to adjust the weights of x and y and trying to calculate that minimum point where z is minimized and we are here in this diagram it's the red star and we start with some random weights and then we just keep on adjusting them and um, as you can see this is a kind of a bowl shaped graph and this is also called the convex function the convex functions have a very nice property that they have only one minimum value whereas if it was like a function with sinusoidal type of thing which has multiple higher and lower values then we might have uh, wrongfully uh, selected that some minimum value as the total minimum value of that function and we would have stopped our algorithm but in this case when we keep on iterating and adjusting weights over and over we will reach the minimum value easily so that's why we typically tend to use a functions which are convex in nature while applying gradient descent as the loss function this video is in continuation of the previous one where we developed a basic understanding of linear regression and now we are moving on to logistic regression so this is not a new topic we already started on linear regression in the previous video and we're just continuing on this in logistic regression we are trying to predict the probabilities or target labels of a specific row since it is a classification problem it's not a regression problem therefore our formula for linear regression needs to be adjusted we cannot use the loss functions we have seen and mentioned because those calculate the loss as a numerical value whereas in classification we are trying to predict a class or category and not a number the formula for logistic regression is called the sigmoid function and it looks like this so the sigmoid of z equal to 1 over 1 plus e raised to minus z and z here is the same linear regression formula which is y or the target label equals or the target value equals w1 f1 plus w2 f2 and so on but since we don't have a numerical target value in this case so we have to adjust this formula in the following way 
we put the result of our multiplication of weights with each feature and then adding them up as z and we just put that in this function where, where you see the z is and that gives us the number between 0 and 1 and it, the function the shape of the function is like an s as you can see in the figure so it's between 0 and 1 and as z increases we are getting close to 1 and as z goes to minus we are getting close to 0 and the loss function has to be adjusted as well and a typical loss function which is variant of the cross entropy loss as opposed to the mean squared error loss that we already saw or the root mean squared error loss or, or one of its variants here we are concerned with the binary loss or in other words classification loss and that is calculated differently and it's very simple function let's analyze it here so m is the number of training examples number of rows we have and loss of y hat and y for each row is basically minus 1 over m and the sum of y which is the actual label times log of the our predicted label plus 1 minus y which is the actual label of that row multiplied by log of 1 minus y predicted label and label by label we mean here the probability so think of this y hat as a number that we have put out if from the sigmoid function after applying the sigmoid function to our calculation of z which is the same as the regression formula for each row and then applying this loss function to that particular value that was output of the sigmoid function so this is how we calculate value of the logistic regression loss and if you analyze this and just to build an intuition for it let's say our y label is one and our predicted y label y hat is close to one so it's like 0 0.8 0 0.9 or something in that case the log of the y hat will be negative number and a very small negative number like 0 0.09 0 0.04 something like that and 1 minus y will be 0 so the other term will cancel out and we will have a loss because of the outer minus sign will become positive and it will be a very small positive number and when those small positive number whenever they are added so it will be a small loss so we were uh, the original label was one and we have prediction was close to that so we have a small loss and on the other hand if our uh, prediction was opposite like close to zero like 0 0.2 0 0.3 or 0 0.1 or something the log of that number will be higher and that will still be negative and then consequently our loss will become higher because of the negative sign. in case when y is equal to zero the first term will cancel out and the second term will be one minus y will uh, be one and if we predict y had to be close to y meaning that close to zero let's say 0 0.2 or something then 1 minus 0 0.2 will be 0 0.8 and because of the outer negative sign it will become a small positive number and so our loss will be small whereas in the other case if we predict it to be higher like for example close to 1 like 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 whereas the actual y hat is zero then we will end up with a higher loss so whenever we are close to label in our probability we have a smaller loss and whenever we are opposite to the label to the actual label or to the ground truth then we have a higher loss so hopefully this has given you an idea of what we are trying to achieve in linear regression and logistic regression and um, how the logistic regression builds upon linear regression by adding a sigmoid function and the loss function is also defined differently so now that we have this intuition, 